Hey y'all, my name is Jose Ocondo. I'm a Chattanooga-based web designer and Webflow developer, and in this video we're talking about nav takeovers. Uh, now if you don't know exactly what I mean, here's a quick example. It's when a hamburger uh, menu button or something like that kind of unfurls this whole menu that takes over the page. And there's a lot of um, kind of easing or eased animations that kind of gently guide you uh, into the menu. And what I love about this is it just creates this feeling of um, almost like a docent <laughs> in a museum. Like you're just kind of being guided through the website in this really kind of informed and um, purposeful manner. Um, this is provider store that we're looking at. Um, and I love how they thought about not only how the menu would animate in, but also how it would animate out. So beautiful. I've got two other examples here that we're going to look at just as inspiration for um, ourselves when we jump into Webflow in just a few minutes here. If you want to jump ahead, I'll make sure I have that TAM stamp in the description box below. But getting to our next inspiration, here is Bonjour Paris. And if you open up the menu, first of all, beautiful entrance kind of sliding in from the right. We've got a lovely image, which I think is tied to these main key pages. And then interestingly enough, they have the full index of their entire website, or not the website, but all of their projects uh, right in the navigation. So super cool. And then there's uh, Bruno, which I think they recently rebranded. They used to be Agence May, um, a French uh, creative agency. And I love uh, just the simplicity of this. Um, and again, they've thought through not only the animate in, but also the animate out. So I have definitely inspired. Um, in a minute here, we're going to hop into Figma to look at the design that I created and then start in Webflow to learn how to create things just like these nav takeovers. Hope you'll stick around. All right, so here we are in Figma and you can see from what we're looking at that this is a lot simpler than some of the examples that we were looking at. But really the idea is just to teach you some of the techniques and then you can uh, take those and run with them um, in your own creative projects. All right, so we're actually going to start with just taking um, or creating <laughs> this part of the navigation bar. Um, so in Webflow, let me go ahead and move this over before I keep doing this. Let's add a navigation bar. And by the way, I have been almost exclusively using the navbar component that comes um, out of the box in Webflow because it's accessible. Um, so if you're using just a keyboard to tab through all of the different elements on a website, um, you can actually tab through the navbar and open up um, the takeover just with the keyboard. Um, so that's amazing. You can't really do that if you create a um, custom uh, navigation bar using animations, um, but it does come as part of the navbar component. Um, and one of the ways that you, or one of the things that you have to do to get that to happen on desktop at least, is here in the settings of the navbar under menu icon 4, it's currently set to tablet and below. We want to go ahead and bring that up to desktop so that we get the menu button. And we can actually go ahead and just delete that. All right, um, and then I like to use my own custom um, container. So we're just going to go ahead and nest this stuff in here and delete that. Um, we'll call this anti for nav takeover nav. Anti container. And uh, here we go. Anti, call this logo wrapper. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not the best at naming. Anti logo. Um, actually, I already have that. So let's go ahead and, whoops. Add our logo. Then let's call this empty menu button. Add an embed. And we're going to go ahead and just use copied SVGs for this. And if I do right click, copy, and copy as SVG, this is in Figma, but Adobe XD and Sketch, all of the major design softwares um, have that. So now we can go ahead and close that out. And then we'll give this a class as well of empty. An icon and I'll go ahead and set it to flex because um, that helps with 
uh, eliminating some of that extra space. I don't know if you saw that little jump. All right. Um, next is, um, well, we can go ahead and get rid of this default gray color. And I think it has a border bottom of um, gray. There. Um, next is, this is just a bit of um, best practices. But um, with websites, you always want the um, clickable area to be as large as possible. So here, uh, what I've seen a lot of folks do is like, um, if I zoom out here, they'll say, okay, this is 24 um, of spacing on either side and 48 on the left. And what I've seen folks do is something like this. I'll kind of move it over 48 and then 24. But the problem is that we're restricting the clickable area to just exactly the text. So if I kind of move my cursor around, you can see that it's no longer clickable. So if we just use padding instead, we can actually uh, achieve the same thing. We get that spacing that we had before, but now when I preview, this whole area is a clickable target. So we're just kind of making it easier for users to click on what they're trying to click on. <laughs> okay. And then with the container, if we make this flex, um, and we set it to space between, um, then we can actually just have this be the same. Um, so I'm going to set this to zero, top and bottom, and 48 on either side, just like we did with the logo wrapper. And then with this, I think if we set it in the middle and minimum height 100%, um, our menu icon will be right in the middle. So now uh, this is opening our nav takeover just like we wanted. All right, so next up is actually developing the inside of the navigation, the actual takeover. <laughs> Before we do that, let's go ahead and add a div block. And just so that we can kind of see what we're doing, let's add a little bit of content. Um, I think I have this class here that I've used before. Um, and that way we can just kind of tell when the navigation is open and when it's not. Nav takeovers. All right. And then we'll just copy and paste that just so we can scroll a little bit, which will help us to do our work. And then the last thing I forgot to do is set this to position absolute. Right now it's relative. And you can leave it relative um, if you need to. Um, but in most cases, I end up making the nav absolute so that it can layer on top of my header. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make that absolute and set the um, position to top. And now we're ready. So we can actually come in here to the navbar settings and click open menu. All right, the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of some of this default styling. And Webflow is kind of funny in that it's telling you that you have a transparent background when obviously uh, it is not. Um, so you just have to go ahead and declare that so it gets rid of that default stuff. Okay, and then we'll call this um, NT nav menu. And I didn't spell that correctly. And the first thing we'll do is actually we'll leave the gray on there just for now so you can see what we're doing here. But I'm going to set the position to fixed and um, full. So now um, no matter if I scroll, the nav is going to stay um, in the viewport. The other little trick I like to do is I like to create a div block and nest everything inside of it. Because the nav menu, it's a component that's a part of the nav bar. Um, you can't get rid of it. And just like we saw with the menu button where it had a background color, even though Webflow was telling us it didn't, there are just some things that are part of the nav menu that um, are just kind of like, uh, you can't figure out what's going on, why it's wrong. And it's because there's these kind of hidden stylings sometimes. So I like to go ahead and create a NT nav menu enter. Or something like that and set it to um, position of width 100%, height 100 VH. And let's go ahead and set the overflow to auto. And what that does is it will ensure that, oh, my little light just turned off, that was kind of weird. Um, it will ensure that uh, if the content overflows, we're gonna get some scrolling um, so that the user can see the rest of it. That's probably really important, especially on 
mobile uh, if you have too much content. Okay, so we've got this set up. Uh, the other thing that we can do is um, we can go ahead and set the uh, positioning of that to flex so that we can get this stuff kind of in the middle. Uh, so we'll do flex and vertical and align in the middle. And then we can go ahead and nest these things. Alright, there we are. And let's go ahead and add two of these. And then we also need to um, nest these <laughs> in a div block so that we can do flex. Actually, let's do container and then flex between. All right, so we're kind of going for that layout where we've got one thing on the left, and one thing on the right. We've used our container class to constrain everything in the middle. And then we use our flex between combo class uh, to get everything to align on the left and on the right. Since we've got two dev blocks holding everything, uh, they're, they're using that space between uh, to align on the start and on the end. Okay. Let's do a little bit more setup uh, with the nav menu. You can go ahead and set that to white. Um, why is it still gray? Oh, that's text color. <laughs> Sorry about that. To white. And then I like to go ahead and make sure that the Z index of the nav menu is higher than um, the actual nav, which I will set to the nav bar, I will set to 99 so that it can be above most of the layers on the website. And we had something interesting happen. Did you notice that uh, the menu button went away? So if I go ahead and remove that 999, it's back. And I actually want to not have it show up. Um, and the reason is I want to actually have two different menu buttons, one for when the nav bar is closed and one for when it's open. And uh, when we get closer to the end of this tutorial, you'll see that we're going to be using a little bit of JavaScript, just a tiny bit, um, so that um, when the nav bar is open, we don't get any scrolling. Like right now, you can see I'm getting this scrolling nav bar. It's because even though the nav bar is open, the website is still scrolling behind it. We want to remove that. So one of the things we can do is with nav menu inner, we can add a div block and Actually, this is wrong. It should be horizontal. No, vertical. And we should set it not to middle, but to a uh, space between, just like we did with this one. And if we add another div block, this will stay in the middle. Okay. And here we can just duplicate the work that we did uh, out here. All right, so now we've got the menu button back. But this navbar <laughs> is actually different from the one that's on the home page. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is, I realize I made a mistake, but I've got the kind of border bottom on the actual nav element. And I want to do it on nav container so that it can pull into the takeover. Okay, so that little border is still there, but it's also still there um, in the nav takeover. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can add our SVG elements. And I went ahead and exported these already. And I think this one is in the top right uh, corner. And it's about, uh, we'll say, well, first of all, let's remove the tiling and from the top 117 pixels. Does that work? Yes, it does. Okay. Cool. And then we can add the other blob as well. And I think this just goes right down in the lower left hand corner. Um, and it does. Okay. So we're kind of getting there. <laughs> the other thing we want to do is with the container, we want to constrain it a little bit more. So that was 992. So we can set like a max width of 
Max width. Something like 1080. It's just going to push the content in a little bit. All right. Awesome. We're actually really close. <laughs> kind of surprised. Okay. And then the last thing is um, these are actually aligned to the bottom. And I bet this is not. Um, these are aligned uh, stretch. So you know what I might do? Now that we've got all these different combo classes, I might go ahead and just do... Um, Duplicate this and call it nav menu container. And this was 1080. And anytime you find yourself creating a bunch of combo classes, it's probably a good indicator that you just need to create a new class. Um, and it was flex, it was space between, and align bottom. Okay. So here, let's add a text block and shuffle it to the top. And this is going to be our overline. Um, oh, that looks awful. <laughs> okay, so enter. And let's just copy some of the styles here really quick. Enter bold 13 over 16 rems. And I can't remember if I've covered rems or not, uh, but we'll just kind of skip over that for now since we're not really talking about that. Um, bold. 1.2 M's. Um, primary, our primary blue is this one, I think. And in terms of spacing, 4%, which would be 0 0.04 M's. Okay. And then this is going to say primary links. All right, let's create an anti nav link. And there is one, two, three, four copies of that. We can delete these. One, two, three, four. And notice that they're all on the same line. That's because their uh, display is set to inline block. An inline block means that they will stay in line with each other <laughs> um, until they run out of room and then they'll cascade down to the next line. Block means that they will not be in line. Uh, they will be on their own line. Um, okay. So we've got a little bit of spacing, 16 pixels. So what I like to do is uh, have that half that and add it there as padding. And let's see, it's 72 pixels. Rem, it is about, uh, let's just say 1M of spacing. It looks like this is pretty bold. Is it just bold? Yeah. Oh no, it's black. Uh, oops, I don't have black, but that's okay. Okay, and then the other thing I noticed is um, everything's aligning in the middle. So we just do text align left. Okay, so great. Let's add the content. Home, how it works. Pricing and, oops, content. Okay, and I also noticed that there's some spacing here. So that is 48 pixels. So let's do, um, uh, let's actually add a dip block here and I'll show you. We'll, we'll kind of discuss this why in a little bit. Oops, not equals, but margin bottom 48. And we'll add that 48 pixels of padding there or margin there. All right, so we've got the left-hand column. Um, I can actually copy this and do secondary links. Alrighty. And, um, oops. Let me go ahead and shuffle this to the top here. And this will be our secondary 
Oh, sorry. Add and T. Secondary. Not like. We can delete these. And how many of these do we need? One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. So then to position block, just like we talked about earlier. And we can give them some of the same stylings. Uh, so this is going to be eight and zero. Uh, looks like this is semi-bold, maybe. Yeah, 24, 16, um, and minus, minus 0 0.01 m's. Okay, that looks pretty good. FAQs. About careers blog. good so far. Um, I think we could bring this in even closer because it's getting a little close to this blob here. So we'll just do 960. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and add our social elements. Then we'll be pretty close to ready. Social links and T. And we're going to use margin and padding to get this spacing right here. So this could be 48. This is 48. And I have no idea what the color is, but we'll just use the CCC color that we used previously. Then let's add a link block. And this will be our social icon. I forgot to give it the prefix here for this particular project. And let's go ahead and get some of this styling here. So 40, I'm actually going to make this 48 because I know uh, just from experience at this point <laughs> that um, if you have a target um, that's less than 48 pixels square, um, Google will ding you and say, hey, that's not accessible. Uh, you have to have at least 48%, 48 pixels square uh, for it to, uh, actually, let me do text link. I don't know why I was doing block. There we go. Okay, and then um, I think I'm using Font Awesome, but by the way, uh, it's more accessible to export those as SVGs and give them an alt text uh, because. Um, why is it? Oh, it's not inline block. So in order for that 48 pixels to take effect, got to make sure that text link is uh, inline block. There we go. So I think we can use um, flux to get that in the middle there. And then we can take off the underline and give it a white, which ugh, I'm feeling accessibility. Does that work? Okay, that works. Oh, that's how I had it here. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's um, copy and paste these a couple of times. And for our social links, let's make this flex. And um, let's do this. Let's give it a margin of eight. And how do I want to do this? Um, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's remove this. And instead of this being Fluxbox, let's make it this use CSS grid. And we'll just make sure it has four columns. And that way we're getting a nice even line with this little border above it. All right. And then, oh, these are actually black, I just noticed. But you know, I kind of like the blue better. So I'm just going to leave it blue. OK. Um, so zooming out, looks like we've finished 
um, setting up the navigation. And just so that you guys can kind of see, let me go ahead and close that. Preview this. And now when I open it, we're getting the whole nav bar come in. Uh, currently that <laughs> the animation is not the best. Um, if you don't have time, using at least overwrite is a little bit easier. Uh, so like ease out, quit, 600, ease out, quit, or not ease in, sorry. So even if you, if you don't have the ability or time or whatever it is to do the custom animation, even just doing that helps. Oh, uh, whoa. Why did it do that? Isn't that interesting that before it wasn't... Um, that's so weird. Um, does that help? Hmm. Okay. Not sure why uh, that did that, but... Okay. Um, but now we kind of get at least a little bit of an animation in. Um, in this next part, we're going to totally do away with that and create our own custom animation with or uh, using Webflow animations just to make it that nice, smooth look that we looked at in some of our inspiration. So there's a couple of things that we need to do to get our nav bar ready for custom animation. And one of them is actually just removing what we did. <laughs> so I'm going to um, set this to zero, the duration. And just to be safe, go ahead and make these all linear. And if you try it out right now, uh, it'll look like it's just kind of appearing suddenly. Um, so we're obviously going to take care of that. All right, next is with the kind of parent navbar um, element selected. If you go to the animations tab, there is a element trigger specifically for the navbar opening. So we're going to click on that. And let's just go ahead and create a new one called NT uh, nav opens. Okay, now that we've added this, Webflow is kind of realizing, oh, hey, okay, they want to have their own custom navigation. We're going to cease kind of like the animations that we're using previously, and now we're going to let them animate in everything. So the first thing we want to do is, remember that I talked about how the nav menu is kind of like this integral part of the component? Well, we can take that uh, nav menu and we can set it to hide. And we want to set the initial state to display none. It's hidden when the page loads, right? So the initial state is hidden. And then we also want to set the opacity to zero. By the way, you can kind of decide how you want to do this. Like, I don't know if you remember that um, example or that inspiration from Banjou Paris, but it kind of slid in from the left. Uh, so there's different ways to approach this. We're going to take more of like the provider store um, inspiration and just kind of animate everything in really nicely and softly. All right, now that we've got our initial states, let's go ahead and, and uh, you know, Webflow has been doing this to me recently where it, <laughs> um, I want to set this to the initial state and I want this to be block. Okay. So basically what I've done is saying, okay, on when the nav bar opens, in other words, when I click on the menu button, um, go ahead and uh, set the display to block. But we can't see anything yet because our opacity is still at zero. So after the display setting, let's add an opacity and we're going to set it to 100 and we'll do something um, fairly quick, like 0.3. I'll give it a little bit of ease. So let's go ahead and test that out and see how that's working. All right, so we've got kind of like the bare bones, the beginnings of um, how we're going to make this work. And we got, we got to do a little bit more homework here uh, to set this up. <laughs> um, but basically what I'd like to do is animate in um, a couple of items in kind of a staggered fashion. So I want primary links to come in first, followed by these links all kind of separately, then secondary links. And then I think we can animate all of these in as a block and animate this in as a block as well. Really want the focus to be on these links. So 
we need to give these some combo classes so that in our nav or in our animation we can target those classes and uh, not uh, not affect too many elements on the page. Uh, so we're going to call this uh, nav one, and this will be nav two, nav three, nav four, five. Nav six, and we're gonna nest all of these. Um, probably should have done this before, <laughs> but we'll nest all of these in a single div block so that we can kind of animate it in as a single element. And you can decide to do something different if you wanted. Whoops, didn't need to do that. Uh, if you decide that you wanted to animate them all separately, you could do that. And part of it is I'm just trying to save time. Nav seven, I think. Hey, now five, now six, now seven, and then actually the social links we can um, not give a combo class because there's this is the only instance of that class. All right, so everything's got a combo class, something a unique identifier that we can hold on to. So if I click on the nav, we can access the opens. And this is kind of the painful part here of making sure that everything has a, um, uh, a starting state and an end state. So starting with the overline, let's move it down and let's say 48 pixels and the opacity to zero. So this is what it's going to start out with. And then after the nav menu animates in, so we'll do something like a delay of 0.2. We'll set this to 100 and we'll set the move to zero. So that's basically the strategy for this is um, making sure that everything has an initial state and animating it in. I'll do a couple more and then I'll speed up the video a bit. So with that first link, let's move it down 48 pixels. And notice here that I'm targeting NT nav link nav two. Um, that's why we added those combo classes so we can uniquely identify those elements. Um, and then opacity zero. And then down here, let's add a move, bring it back to zero pixels, which is the um, where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and then we also don't want to leave it at a delay of 0.2. Let's let's do a delay of 0.3. Okay. And then an opacity. Of 100. So now I just have to go through and um, add all of the um, animations here in our mega navigation animation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video and you guys will catch me on the end when I've finished adding all these items in. All right, so we've got all of our animations in, and now we just want to customize the kind of timing and easing a little bit so it has that really smooth feel. So if you kind of notice right now, if I play it, everything has a time of or a duration of 0.5 seconds and a easing of linear. And so it is animating in, but it feels really stilted and it's not very smooth or graceful. So I'm going to click on the last item and shift click all the way up to the nav menu, which already has some easing applied to it. And let's go ahead and make it one second instead of 0.5. And the easing will set to outquint. Now you can experiment with the times and the different easing ones. Those are the ones that I've gravitated to, but you can definitely kind of choose what you think works best. And now if we try it, everything is animating in way better. All right, let's go ahead and double check just by previewing it. And it's looking great. One thing I did notice is I forgot to change out <laughs> this icon here. Um, so let's make sure that we have the menu open. Let's open up this. And uh, here, let me copy this SVG and paste that in. All right, much better. Okay. Um, so two things remain for us to call this a day. 
One is we, we need to set the animations for when the navbar closes. And then the last thing is just making sure that the website isn't scrolling behind uh, this um, nav takeover when we have it open. Um, let me just change this to capital O. For some reason that was bugging me. <laughs> okay, and the way to do it is super easy because now that we've got this set up, we can just duplicate it and uh, use the ones that we already have in here just to make things super easy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to delete all of the ones that are introducing or adding in the um, elements because we want to do the opposite. We want to return it back to the initial state. So we can take all of our initial state um, settings and just unclick initial state. And now they're actually animations. So the one that we definitely want to make sure is very last is this hide. We want to set it at the very bottom so that it's not uh, kind of clipping the animation. The next thing we want to do is we can just kind of give everything a out quint uh, ease out of 0.5 seconds is probably fine. Um, and to test that, let's go live. Everything is open and close. Everything just kind of animates out. Um, I think if I weren't doing this as a tutorial video, I may stagger the animations a little bit so that everything kind of animates out at a different speed. Uh, but I think for the purposes of this tutorial, um, that's looking great. All right, we're on the last step of our nav takeover. By the way, uh, you might have noticed I'm wearing different clothes. This is the next evening for me. But anyways, what we want to do is we want to make sure that when the user scrolls, when they have the navigation bar, uh, sorry, the nav takeover open, the website is not scrolling uh, behind you. So just to give you uh, an example of what I'm talking about, let's give this a background, um, I don't know, color class. And we'll just give it some random color here that's already in the palette. And there we are. Okay, so if we preview this, we open up the menu, and I'm scrolling with my mouse wheel. Notice that the scroll bar is um, open on the right. And even though I started at the top of the page, when I close the menu, I'm now at the bottom of the page. And this is not expected user behavior. The user expects that when the navigation menu is open, the website is not scrolling uh, behind it. So um, unfortunately, there is not a, a easy way to take care of this um, inside of Webflow. It requires a little bit of custom code, but the custom code is very minimal um, and super easy to implement. And there's a couple of great resources. One is from Timothy Ricks or Trix, <laughs> and I'll link his video. Um, but the one that we're going to use is actually from Nelson from Pixel Geek, who works at Webflow. And we're using his stratagem just because I find um, it a little bit easier to use. But um, I would encourage you to learn about both methods and you can implement the one that you find easiest. Uh, with his, we have to have two different classes, one for opening the navigation menu and one for closing it. That's why we have one button for opening and one button for closing. That's how we built this navigation menu. So um, here is the video where he talks about um, how to implement this, and I'll make sure to link it in the description box. But basically, we need to add a little bit of jQuery in um, the head tag and a little bit of CSS. So we're going to copy this, come over to our page. And by the way, I would do this in the uh, website settings, not just the page settings, but since I have multiple kind of like projects in this one <laughs> site, I'm just doing it in the page settings. But let's add a script tag. That was missing from Nelson's um, thing there from his uh, video. And um, he explains it very carefully in his video. But just a quick overview is that um, this script is looking for this class. When this class is clicked, um, you can see click here. It adds a class of no scroll to the body. OK, what does that do? Well, if we come over here and we go to our body, and we go to body all pages and we set it to overflow hidden and publish. Now, remember that there's two sections um, on this site. Now, if I refresh and I scroll down, I can't. You might hear me hitting my <laughs> mouse. Um, I can't scroll down. That's because body is set to overflow hidden. 
Anyways, all right. So let me go ahead and republish. And so essentially what this script is doing is it's saying, hey, when somebody clicks on this class, set the body to overflow hidden. And we get that from this right here. So we can add a style tag, add that in, and style. Okay, so now you see no scroll is a style of overflow hidden. And it's getting that, that class is getting added to the body, just like we did right now, where we set the body all pages to overflow hidden. Um, that's essentially what this is doing. And on close, it is removing that class from the body. Let's go ahead and save that. And the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have two different buttons, one for opening and one for closing. We have NT menu button. That's our opening button. So we hop back into the page settings and we want to change menu for our class that we're actually using. And then if we open up the menu, right now we're using the same class for this, but we actually want to duplicate it and um, you can name it whatever you want, but I'll just add close. Um, append it at the end there. And then in the page settings, we're going to add that same class instead of uh, what Nelson had in his script. All right, so this is now ready to go. So if I publish this, uh, you know, um, publishing is always a little bit nerve wracking when you're doing a tutorial because you never know, you never know how long it will take. <laughs> okay. So again, I can scroll. When I open and I try to scroll, you can hear me scrolling on my mouse. Nothing is happening. And I close it. I'm still in the first section. I haven't scrolled, but I can scroll again when I've closed. That's because when I hit this button, I'm hitting that class, that no scroll style is getting added to the body tag. I can't scroll. When I click this class, it's getting removed and I can scroll again. But we're going to have a couple of issues still. Um, so we need to add a few more steps. What if there's an in-page link? Um, so what if I open up this and about is supposed to take me to this second section? We're going to have a couple of issues. So the first thing that we need to do is open up our menu and we need to add a um, animation to all of our links to make sure that if they are added, if they are linked to um, something in page uh, that um, the nav bar is actually going to close. So I've added um, previously, I added an ID to this section of about, and I added a link to that section here on the about. So if I try to navigate to it, notice that the nav bar isn't actually closing. Um, now the website has taken us there but we probably didn't get that smooth scroll and of course the navigation bar not closing or sorry the menu not closing is a pretty big deal so what we can do is in the in interactions we can add a mouse click start an animation and set the animation to nt nav close so we're saying okay when you click on one of these links close the navigation bar and we want the trigger not to be the element but the class and we want to make sure that the class is like the parent class. Or there's no combo class on it. So now all of these have that same class. Let's do the same thing over here. When somebody clicks, start an animation, close the navigation bar, make the trigger the class, and don't have the combo class, but make it the parent class. So it applies to all four of these. All right. We need to do one more thing, actually two more things. <laughs> um, you want to make sure that all of these um, classes, we're not targeting the children. We're actually targeting all elements with this class. Um, the reason for that is because the about is the trigger. Like when somebody clicks on it in the about, but nav seven is not a child <laughs> of um, that link. It's actually a parent element. So we've got to make sure that this is set to all elements so that the animation actually affects all these things. All elements. Okay. 
just a couple more here. All right, so I think um, I previously did this. Um, okay, that's perfect. I previously did this to the open. So if we go to the open, all of these are set to all elements. All right, and then there's one last thing, I promise. <laughs> the last thing that we need to do is we want to copy these classes for the links and we want to add them to our closed script here that removes no scroll from the body. Because notice that the nav bar, or sorry, the nav menu, I keep saying that, is going to close, but we haven't actually hit the close menu button. So we need to add the classes here. And the way you do that is you add a comma, you add a period to indicate that it's a class, and then you add your class. You need to do the same thing for these guys. Scroll down, add a comma, add a period to indicate it's a class, and paste. All right, so now if we hit the menu button, if we hit the primary nav link, or if we hit the secondary link, I got that backwards, but you know what I mean, um, then body will have no scroll removed from it, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now we're going to publish, and I hope I did this correctly. <laughs> um, we'll see if I did. All right, let me remove hashtag there, open that. First of all, let's check if we get any scrolling. No, no scrolling. So, so far, so good. Close the menu, we can scroll. Open it up again, click about, the nav uh, menu closed, collapsed, and we sped scrolled down to the about section was exactly what we want, and we can still scroll in and out of the page. All right, so that does it for this tutorial. I hope that you found the content engaging. I know that I really enjoy the topic of nav takeovers. That metaphor I talked about at the beginning of the video of like a docent walking you through the museum, that really is what this is like. You know, just kind of introducing new users to the pages on your website, the content, um, in this really slow kind of methodical way so that they don't get overwhelmed. Um, so anyways, I hope that you consider it for your next project. And speaking of next projects, I'm starting a new Skillshare class. I'm going to start recording uh, next week, I think. Um, so make sure that you uh, subscribe, get notifications by hitting that bell icon so that you can get apprised of when I release that Skillshare class. And I'll probably be adding some free content from the class here on YouTube. All right, that's enough from me. I'll see you guys in the next one.